Oh, okay. This is TT Artisan's brand new 27mm f2.8 for Nikon's APS-C camera. And it can be one of the smallest APS AF lenses I've ever seen. Hi, it's Jimmy Chang here from Red35 and welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to look at TT Artisan's brand new 27mm 2.8 AF lens for Nikon's APS-C cameras. Well, this is a rather unique piece. Well, if you've been with the channel long enough, you know that I have reviewed a ton of TT Artisan's lenses for my Core 4 third platform. And some of them are really highly regarded and also highly recommended for me, such as the 23mm f1.4, and some of the 0.95 50mm lenses and they are great value for money and they are relatively high performing as well at least for the money so i'm excited to test this one out for a pc camera to see how it stacks up with all my previous experiences with tt artisan lenses well tt artisan also stands for one thing affordability, also known as cheap. <laughs> but bear in mind that I did recommend a couple of the lenses, you know, being one of the best for the value, uh, such as the 17 and the 23 millimeters 1.4. They are fantastic lenses for the price, and they are actually very close some, to some of the more high-end lenses that co possibly cost about two to three times of the money. So in that case, you know, they are brilliant and many of you have tried them and also agree with me and I'm pretty sure that I've seen some of the comments before in my previous uh, videos that reviewed those lenses and uh, but how does this 27 mm 2.8 stacks up well good news because it is fantastically good and uh, the whole thing is built with metal all glass elements there there's no plastic whatsoever the focusing ring the aperture rings are all metal brilliant and once again, it doesn't cost you a bomb either. The only thing I would probably say that it hasn't got any weather sealing. So if you want to take it out to the wild, no, it's not recommended. You may want to put a plastic bag over it. Uh, apart from that, it's really, really good. Well, another thing I really enjoy using the 27mm 2.8 is how smooth the focusing ring is. It's almost matching what the menu focusing lenses that TT Artisan has produced before. But obviously, this is for now focused by wire. And one thing I don't like about focused by wire is that, well, at least majority of them is that it has this infinity ring that it turns forever. And that means that, you know, for filming, for instance, it's going to be really, really tricky. There's no definitive ends. So if you want to pull in a, a full on focus modules, yeah, you can forget about it. It's going to be really, really difficult to do that. Um, but one thing I do like a lot about this lens is the aperture ring. Click stop fantastic feels good as well it feels almost like one of those uh, really high-end manual lenses you can get on the market but again this is focused by wire so even though you can feel the click the aperture ring doesn't move at all because yes once again it's also by wire so everything's controlled via the uh, electrical contact here to the camera uh, but i don't like uh, you know using the uh, camera's front dial to change the aperture so this is fantastic this is way more intuitive i wish more and more lenses would have a actual uh, aperture ring on the lens so it kind of brings back all the intuitiveness of operating a camera in terms of adjusting the exposure triangle so all in all I really can't fault TT Artisan's brand new 27mm 2.8 in terms of build quality because once again it impresses me so much that I think it's one of the best on the market you know in terms of user materials and the fit and finish of this thing you just would think this would cost a lot more than it is <music> the 
This tiny guy here is perhaps one of the best things I've seen for Nikon ZFC cameras. And you all know that I bought this ZFC for its nostalgic look and feel and operation, of course. You know, I wanted to feel like I'm operating a, a uh, analog camera. And this thing really does it, you know, it has aperturing, tall, small and tiny size. It's great and it has the perfect weight distribution once you mount it on the ZFC, which is fantastic. But one thing that puzzles me, really puzzles me, is that how can someone outside of Nikon build something better than Nikon itself? Yeah, if you want to nerd it out, let me give some statistics. This guy here is, don't get me wrong, this is also a great lens as well. This is Nikon's own 28mm 2.8. It's got this really old retro looking. This is the limited editions, of course. And if you put it side by side, you can tell straight away, it's about a third shorter and a third smaller. Crazy, right? This is really, really crazy. And uh, I just don't understand it at all. And also, if you want to nerd it out, this guy, the TT Artisan 27mm 2.0 is 155 gram lighter that this already light 28 mm 2.8 and this guy's plastic and this is full metal <laughs> well more so this guy also 25 gram lighter than nikon's own 26 mm 2.8 pancake lens that guy is already tiny and small and light and this thing still beats it how could it be i just i don't know i'm lost words <laughs> okay right yes the brick wall well let's see if tt artisans 27 millimeters 2.8 can triumph in the image quality department as you can see central sharpness is crazy and i mean sharp with plenty of details even at 2.8 stopping down will improve things a bit but peak sharpness arrives at 5.6 before diffraction softens the image at f11. And edge sharpness is, well, equally crazy. Sharp as a pin, and you can really see all the details as far as the corner of the frame. However, my copy's bottom corner, or the left corner more specifically, is a little softer than the other three, which is a little weird to me. Not blurred, but just, yeah, just a little bit softer compared to the other corners. And it's quite noticeable. Peak arrives at 5.6 again, and diffraction won't be a problem until f11. Flare resistance of this thing is very consistent with any other TT Artisan's lenses I've tested before. That means plenty <laughs> if it hit the lens at the right uh, angle of the light. Um, the included reverse lens hood does nothing <laughs> to actually minimize that. Um, that. Well, it looks good at least. Um, it does remind me of the old uh, Nikon FM3A plus my 45mm 2.8p lens uh, that I had before, which is actually fantastic and I like that lens a lot. So this does give me the look, not necessarily the performance. So if you want uh, a better lens hood, I think you're probably better off getting a third party one that may help you further. Um, but regardless of that, I think there are still uh, you know, uh, some flares are visible when, when the lens is kind of hitting a wrong light angle source, like I mentioned earlier. But aberrations is another thing. Well, at 2.8, there are some they can see, especially in the higher contrast scenes. But if you stop onto f4, you can probably eliminate most of it, if not all of it. So it's okay. I mean, I, I don't mind it at all. This is some kind of characters that I always pursued anyway in the lens. One thing I really do enjoy using any TT Artisan lenses is, is bokeh or more specifically rendering. Because all the lenses really does give me that nostalgia look and feel of the 80s and 90s. And this brand new 27mm 2.8 is no exception. I love how the drawers looks, you know, in terms of how the image is being rendered. And uh, it's just fantastic. If you're really going for that kind of old film look, you know, without using any of the presets, like I mentioned in some of the episodes and videos, yeah, this lens will definitely give you that. The Nabokka, while it's not quite creamy, but it really does give you that kind of really lovely old school look, almost some, like some of those Russian lenses you can buy on the market right now. Um, that I genuinely dig the look of this lens. And yeah, like I said, combining with this ZFC here, it kind of gives you the overall 
old school package. And on top of that, like I already mentioned, the reverse lens hood, the actual nostalgic look and feel of the aperture ring with the ZFC overall look and aesthetics. Well, you've got a killer combo here. So here's the thing. TT Artisan's 27mm 2.8 is autofocus enabled. It has a pretty silent motor, even though you can still hear a little bit of it. So technically, it can be used in video, right? You know, many of you like to self-film using these kind of lenses. Yes, it can. However, just let me give you some idea, is that the focus motors is not very fast. It's okay for general snapping and things like that. I think for video shooting, the, uh, the focus motor may not be fast enough to track anything faster. And also, um, it's a lot of breathing. Yes, it's really heavy. It's almost like it's short of breath or something. It's just struggling to breathe in the air or something. So yeah, it does sucks in and out when you are racking focus from the closest to the infinity. But in most cases, you probably won't use these sort of lenses to do that anyway, um, that because of the focal length. You know, it's 27 millimeters, so it's equivalent almost like a 35 in full frame. So that sort of wide angle, you probably won't do that anyway, but you might. You know, you never so. So I just want to highlight that to you, so you you are fully aware of the situation here. And uh, also, like I already mentioned, if you do want to use it as a manual lens, forget about it. You know, I just don't like the infinity ring that turns forever. It's just really hard to nail focus if you want to do it manually. So yeah, for maybe some applications, not all video applications. So how about TT Artisan's twenty eight millimeters performance? in terms of distortion and vignetting. Well, first of all, it's pretty horrendous in terms of distortion. It has quite noticeable barrel distortion. Yeah, it's something that you may have to consider when you are using this lens uh, for photography or video. In photography, it's pretty simple. You can correct in post, in Lightroom, and any other software that you can use. And uh, yeah, just a simple plus five or plus eight, you can correct that quite easily. But in video, you will see that and if you want to correct that in video, you can, but then you lose some pixels as a result, and uh, yeah, you, you just want to bear that in mind. However, having said that, <laughs> Nikon's own 28mm 2.8 also has distortion if you strip all those lens profile corrections away. Yep, that's, <laughs> that's something I want to tell you that. And also, speaking of which, if you strip all the, um, the lens profile correction for the Nikon's 28mm 2.8, you will also see vignetting. And that brings me to the vignetting of this guy here. Okay, the Nikon does perform slightly better in terms of the vignetting, lose about half a, light, a half a stop of light with the Nikon. The TD Artisan is quite a bit heavier. It's probably about one to one and a half stop of light loss in any given aperture settings. And <laughs> this is pretty crazy. I don't know. I have no idea whether it's the image circles or, or how the lens is being constructed. So you do lose some light at the corners. It's not something that you should be too worried about for photography. Once again, you can correct it quite easily in post. And, uh, but some may actually like that kind of darker kind of looks anyway. It's kind of giving even more nostalgic kind of appearances. So you never know. But the decision is yours if you want to make your own judgment based on you know, what you see in the sample images, whether this kind of look that you're looking for. So, all in all, I don't think it's bad bad given the price. You may have noticed one thing that I haven't mentioned at all throughout the entire video so far is the price of TT Artisan's 27mm 2.8. Well, listen to that and you might be shocked because it only cost you $149. Ta-da! <laughs> this is cheap. Compared to any of the AF lenses you can buy on the market right now, and also consider the fact that this guy is full metal built with just impeccable look, you know, that matches so well with the ZFC. I think this could be one of the lenses you should get if you have the same camera as me. And uh, yeah, I, I would rate it higher the Nikkor's own 28mm 2.8. Okay, yeah, this does give you that rubber ring that resemble, you know, the older Nikkor lenses, but look, this guy is smaller, lighter, cheaper, 
almost as good as that in terms of the image quality. And it does give you that nostalgic rendering and then the Nikko is definitely more modern. Um, so if you're happy with the look, I don't think you will get a worse lens, or in fact, this could be the best lens you can get for this ZFC. Fantastic. So yeah, really, this is my conclusion of this lens. And what do you guys think about this? You know, after seeing all the sample images, do you agree with my judgment here? Should you think that um, there are any options that maybe I should try, maybe to try to ask for it and uh, to test it on the ZFC? If so, please do let me know in the comment section below. And you know what to do now. And uh, sub if you like this and sub if you stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, lens reviews. Peace. Welcome to my bonus sections and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoy my review on TT Artisan's 27mm 2.8 for Nikon ZFC or any Nikon APC camera. And TT Artisan also offer this lens in other mounts too, such as Fujifilm and other, I think Sony as well, I'm not entirely sure, but you can check out with the links in the description below. Um, the, it's not affiliated, I just dug it out and uh, chuck it in the, <laughs> in the description so you can click and see it. Um, the, but anyway, I do enjoy using this lens. I do think that this is a perfect combination of the ZFC if you really want to go for the really light and, and kind of like street friendly uh, uh, appearances and handling. This is really one of the best here. Definitely better than Nikko's own 28mm 2.8 like I mentioned in the video. Um, so yeah, it's really enjoyable experience to use it. And lately I've been testing quite a few lenses. You may have seen me already tested uh, a Viewtrox, uh, 75 mm 1.2. This is yeah, also a very, very good lens for uh, any of the Nikon APC cameras. It's just fantastic. It's a bit chunky and weighty, but you know, it's also very good. And speaking of which, I'm also currently testing Makey's 35 mm uh, f0.95 for Nikon ZFC. So um, yeah, this should be really interesting lens as well because it's got such a wide aperture um, I just want to see how it looks uh, when I use the uh, on these NFC cameras and see how you know how the image quality looks so stay tuned for that if you want to see that particular lens anyway I'm also testing something that you may not notice because there's nothing about cameras and lenses here is whatever I'm using right now you may see that it's tracking me I don't have a camera man with me no I don't Tracer is gone somewhere else, having a holiday, having a nice glass of wine or something. And this is my automated assistant that helps track me when I'm walking around. This is fantastic. And uh, if you're interested, I'm not going to review what it is because this, this is crazy. This is a crazy tech that I've, I, I've been craving for for a long, long time. And I'm telling you that this company finally makes one and I have it right here with me. So stay tuned for my future review of this little gadget here, because if you're a self, uh, self filmmakers or a self shooters, um, YouTubers, content creators, this guy here, it could be a godsend. I'm not joking. Combine it with a lightweight system like uh, what I'm filming right now, the uh, OM system OM5, you got a killer combo right here. This is really, really good and such a lightweight system. I can take it on board uh, to all my travel and do my little docu-series and things like that. You know, if I don't want to have a big system and if you want to do a little bit of a tracking uh, when I'm describing about the scene and, you know, just having a little bit more animations here in the video, this is definitely one of the best. Definitely. Anyway, have a good day, guys, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy wherever you are. Keep shooting, keep creative, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.